Welcome to the next part of this Angular 2 series. Well, so far we had a look at single components, two components, some data binding, two-way data binding and all that fun stuff. Now, what we actually did though was we, the data we fetched was just a variable within one of our components. Now, that's not very realistic and especially if you're fetching data from, let's say, a server or something like this, you want to have your extra class, your extra file or part of your app, which does that so that it is also possible to share this data across several components. Now, for, for this purpose and for all purposes where you want to share some functionality over many different components or parts of your app, Angular 2 has a concept called services. And we're going to have a look at those services in this video. So let's get right to it. This is the state of the app where we last left. Get our list here where I can select items and edit them with two-way binding. And data is all packed into this property of the contact list component. Now we will create a service for this and I will actually create some new files for, for this video. First of all, let's define a contact class or an interface because we don't even need a class. We just want to yeah, create a contract which defines a contact, so to say. So let's create a contact. Let's create a contact.ts file. And all this file has is an interface named contact, which describes our, yeah, what a contact is, how a contact object should look like. It should have a first name, which is a string, a last name, which is also a string, a, f oops, yeah, a phone number, which is a string, and an email, which is also a string. So this is the strength of TypeScript here that we can just define um, all our properties and which type they should have. Now as a side note, this file won't get compiled to JavaScript because in JavaScript we got no typing and therefore there is nothing to compile here because all we do is declare some properties. So this is purely for our TypeScript checking and for writing semantically and syntactically correct TypeScript code. And it will make our coding life here really easier to have this contact defined here. Additionally, I will create a mock contact.ts file to create just an example list of contacts, just like we had here. In a real application, we would obviously probably go to a server to fetch the data. So in this case, this mock contact TS is our data source. And I will just export a constant here, which I name contacts of type contact, specifically, specifically an array of contacts. And I will just create some contacts here really quick. Be right back. So with the mock data finished, we should get to our actual service. I will create a contact service. Oops, contact dot service dot ts. So this is kind of the convention here in Angular 2 that we have the name of our object of our class. Then we have the description, if it is a component, a service or whatever. And then obviously the TypeScript uh, file ending. What you have to do in our service class here is, first we have to provide a decorator, injectable, which will tell Angular 2 that this class here is, well, injectable in other classes, for example, in other components, so that they can yeah, get an instance of this object and I will export this class too and it will be our contact service and all this service has is a real simple uh, method 
get contacts where we'll use a promise to get the contacts. And please note that all my imports are automatically done by PHP Storm, so make sure that if you're following along, you're not missing those contacts here. Uh, those imports here. Imports of the contacts. Good, so that's all we have in our service here, this method which will return us um, this promise, which we will instantly resolve and get our contacts. Now, if you're not sure how promises work, you should uh, look it up. I'm not going to go into detail in this video here, but um, it's a real handy thing, especially for things like fetching data in um, the service here, for example. So I save this back in our contact list. Here is where we will have to somehow access the service to, to fill our contacts property here. So first of all, I made the service injectable, so we have to inject it here. Now, as we specified directives used by this uh, component, we can also specify services or generally to be injected objects used by this component. We do this by adding another configuration, the providers configuration, which also takes an array. And in here, we basically pass all objects which should be injected into this component. So we have our contact service here. And import was automatically added. Now, where do we inject it? In the constructor. But we can only inject it in the constructor when we provide it here as a provider. So in the constructor, we will define a private variable contact service of type contact service. That's important so that Angular 2 will really do the injection and know which type of object we're expecting here. And then we have to do nothing else in this constructor. Now, if you're not familiar with the syntax here, what this does by placing a private here at the beginning, it will automatically assign this object, this instance it's, it gets from the injection to a private property of this class. So it's the same as if we were to write pri private contact service and then just do this contact service equals contact service. That's exactly the same. It's just a shorter way. So now we got our contact service here and we, we somehow then need to set our contacts here to the contacts we're getting through the service. So first of all, I'm going to get rid of this static content here and instead uh, just declare this property. It will be of type contact an array of contacts to be precise. And then I will add a method here, get contacts, which will then access our, access our contact service. Get the contacts there, which as you may remember, it turns a promise. So we can then use the then function to handle whatever the promise returns us. And there we will use this fed arrow function where we will get contacts, contact array. And this we will store in our contacts property. Now, this method is currently never executed. That's why we're not seeing anything here on the right. No, list at, all, at least. So how do we execute this? We could execute it in a constructor, but we don't really want to do something like this in a constructor. Because imagine we're actually querying a server. In this case, doing something like this, uh, such a data-heavy process in a constructor, could have some bad consequences. So instead, we're going to use an Angular 2 lifecycle hook. So Angular 2 
has several yeah, life cycle events, so to say, for several things and especially for the creation or the handling of components. So when we define a component here and when it gets loaded in the application, it will run through different stages of its life cycle. One of it being the initiation. And that is where we will get our data. Now to do this, we will implement the on init protocol, which again was added as an import here in the top. And now we have to actually implement the ng on init method. And here we will just call this get oops, this get contacts method. Save this, and now you see we got our list of contacts here. We can click on them, and we can again edit them with two-way binding. And that's how easily services are to be implemented. And they are very useful, as I already stated. We can use the service we just created, not only in this component, but in any component we want. And that makes us really, really flexible and enables us to write dynamic, cool apps. See you in the next video. Bye.